I'm sharing this session today with uh, Dr. Heather Ross. And this is how I think many of you know Heather. Uh, she is, uh, has a lot of letters after her name and a doctor before it. She's the division head of cardiology at the Toronto General Hospital and the University Health Network, Network, professor of medicine, University of Toronto, and the Ryder Rogers Chair in Heart Function. This is how we choose to know Heather. <laughs> Heather is the person. She is Heather Ross, Queen of the North. I think you would all agree with that fine title. She's a world traveler mother of dogs, singer of songs, breaker of stereotypes, and dances like nobody's watching, <laughs> but they are, and she doesn't care. So um, Heather's gonna join us on stage right now and uh, give us a uh, lay of the land with respect to heart failure. Dr. Ross? I've had a lot of intros, but that might actually be my favorite. <laughs> so uh, thank you, and I am just uh, really honored uh, to, to be here today to really kick off and introduce this session, and I think it's fair to say you guys have no idea what you're in for, and this is one hell of a group uh, that has been assembled. I know this is preaching to the choir, but I think it's always important to preface that uh, heart failure is an epidemic in Canada. We know uh, heart and stroke stats, 600,000 extrapolation from ICES stats would suggest one million Canadians have heart failure. There's a one in five lifetime risk of the diagnosis once you're over the age of 40, which I will admit in this company, but not anywhere else. Um, terrifying stats are a 90% mortality at 10 years. Terrifying stats are $3 billion spent in the care of heart failure, and yet recognizing that many people in the country do not have access to care, do not have equitable care, do not have access to guideline-directed medical therapy. Calmness cause for hospital admission. And for those patients who have advanced heart failure, the lottery of life is the opportunity to receive a transplant or mechanical circulatory support. So we have to do better, and I, I have gained a much better understanding of what heart failure is from the caregiver perspective. My father died from heart failure this year. And I, I, I really think it's important now for me to say in ways that I hope I did, but in ways now that I absolutely believe in, the voice of the patient matters. And I would say that I learned this from my father because he had the opportunity to choose his own care and to choose how his life ended with dignity at home. And it was potentially one of the most uh, important experiences of my life as a doctor. It isn't an only important that the patient's voice is heard, it's actually imperative. We need to recognize that as healthcare providers, patients give us the privilege of engaging in their care, the privilege and the opportunity to understand their story and their life, the privilege and opportunity to engage in their health care and their health record. It is their gift to us. So I think shared decision making is something that we can't pay lip service to. We must embrace and embody. This afternoon, we're going to hear many different patient stories, and each story matters. Please listen. You will be enriched and enlightened, and I'm looking forward to it. Julian, back to you.